this video, we're going to look at proving overlapping triangles are congruent. So my first suggestion for you would be to get your highlighters, highlight the two triangles you see um, and what you're trying to prove are congruent. And then we're going to separate the triangles because sometimes looking at overlapping triangles can be overwhelming and it's hard to see things. So let's go ahead and first of all, just start this by looking at what are we trying to prove? So I'm trying to prove triangle RSY is congruent to triangle TSX, so this triangle right here. And the reason why I like to highlight before I separate them is because when you highlight and you have overlapping triangles, you're going to hopefully see the reflexive property. I'm going to say 99% of the time when you have overlapping triangles, reflexive property is going to be in there because you have overlapping pieces, which means you have shared pieces. So when I look at this, um, let me go ahead and redraw these while I have the colors selected. So I'm going to just redraw these and I'll label them. I'm going to try to redraw them to make them look like they're in the same position. They don't have to be perfect, but just trying to make them look as accurate as possible. So there's my two triangles. And right away, I looked for reflexive property. So right here, I saw that shared angle S. It's completely the same angle in both of those. So that means as soon as I separate them, I'm going to mark that reflexive property that I saw. And then I can go ahead and I can mark this other stuff. And you can decide if you want to mark it in both diagrams. It's probably um, good to kind of do that just in case you need something that isn't there anymore when you separate them. So if I look at angle R and angle T, those are congruent. If I mark them in both pictures, we can see that. And then we have RY, so this entire thing is congruent to TX. So if I look in my picture here, RY and TX are congruent. So it was this entire piece and this entire piece are congruent. And you can see how it looks very messy to try to mark that in your original overlapping picture, which is why separating it makes it so much easier to see. So now that these are separated, I can easily see angle, angle, side as my method. So that's going to be the way that I'll prove this. So angle, angle, side. So let's go ahead and write it up. So we had angle R is congruent to angle T. So the good thing about this is you're not learning any new theorems or definitions or properties. It's just the pictures are a little bit more complicated, but we can uncomplicate them by just separating them and using our colors to do so. Um, and then I had RY is congruent to TX. That was given. And then remember, I had the reflexive property. So angle S is congruent to angle S. And there's more, um, there's only one angle S, so that's why I'm just using a single letter. To be safe, you could use three letters or put numbers in there. And that's my reflexive property. So then from there, if I'm trying to do angle, angle side, well, I have my first angle, I have my second angle. And then my side outside of the angles is right there. So if I take these and bring them all together, that'll get me what I'm trying to prove. So triangle RSY is congruent to triangle TSX. And that's by angle, angle, side. So you can see the proof's really short. It's just you spend more time up front trying to visually see what's happening. So let's try one more of these. So this one here, first step, let's look at what triangles are we trying to prove before I even start marking things. So I'm trying to prove ADC, so triangle ADC, especially in this picture because there's multiple triangles pictured. So ADC, I'm trying to prove that that's congruent to CEA. And again, you can see right away where that reflexive property is. You're looking for something that's completely shared. So I can see right here, completely shared side. Now keep in mind, you do see some points that are shared. So like this point of intersection, but that's not a side or an angle that's shared between the two triangles. So I don't really care about that. I only care about sides or angles that are completely shared. So let me 
get my colors back out here too and let's separate these. So I have the blue triangle. And again, it helps if you try to make the triangles look um, the same, like in the same position as what you see. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just makes it easier to visually see what's happening. Label your letters. So I have D, A, and C. And then this is E, A, and C. So then we marked reflexive property. I'm just going to put an X here to represent that was reflexive. And then let's start marking our other things here. So AB is perpendicular to CD. So this is where I said when you mark your diagram, you have to kind of go back to the original because if I looked at my separated triangles, I don't have AB anymore because I took only the triangles out of the original picture. So that's why if you go back to the original and you mark it, AB and CD are perpendicular. So that means I have right angles. That means in my triangle, this angle right here is a right angle. And then BC, so again, looking at the big picture, is perpendicular to AE. I can mark that, which in my yellow triangle, it's just this angle at E. And I'm going to put numbers in there to talk about those. And then I have AE. So AE is this entire side. So AE is congruent to CD, which is this entire side, which again, it's difficult to mark in that picture. So that's why having them separated is nice, so DC. And now we have everything marked. We've used our overlapping triangles and we used our diagram to get reflexive properties. So it looks as if, if I identify this, I have side side angle, but I have right triangles. So that means I'm gonna be using HL dash right triangle. So let's focus on writing that up. So I have my perpendicular lines. So I'm going to go ahead and group those together. So these are given. And then I have segment AE is congruent to segment CD. And then also, remember, we always are looking at our diagram as well. So our diagram, I have my reflexive property. So I'm just going to mention that now. So AC is congruent to AC. So those two things are going to give me, if I kind of look at where I'm at with my proof, I have the hypotenuse is this. So that's going to give me the H. The legs are right here, so I already have those mentioned in my proof. I don't have right triangles mentioned yet, so I need to work on getting the right triangles. So whenever you have perpendicular lines, the first thing you need to say is that you have right angles. Now, when you mention these right angles, do not say angle D and angle E, because if I look at my original diagram, there's two different angles at angle D and at angle E. So what I would do is just number them here, and then number them in our picture. So that way we can just say angles one and two or use three letters. When in doubt, just use three letters or put numbers in them. So I'm gonna say angle one and angle two are right angles. So that's my first statement once I have perpendicular lines. So that's because perpendicular lines give me the right angles. And then from there, I now have to say, I have to decide, do I want to say that those are congruent or do I want to say I have right triangles? Well, we're trying to prove using HL, so I need to mention that I have right triangles. I don't care if these angles are congruent because I'm not trying to prove a pair of congruent angles. So I'm going to look right up here and I'm going to copy down so I have triangle ADC and triangle CEA are right triangles. So the two triangles that I'm trying to prove are congruent are right triangles, which is why we'll be able to use HL. And the reason why those triangles are right triangles is because they each contain one right angle. So a triangle with one right angle implies a right triangle. 
So now that statement right there is allowing me to go back up here and highlight or check off the fact that I've mentioned the right triangles. So now I can take my three pieces, because remember it always takes three pieces to be able to prove congruent triangles, and that's going to lead me to say triangle ADC is congruent to triangle CEA by HL. And you can decide if you want to put HL or HL dash right triangle. That right triangle is just to remind you that you have that third piece that you need to prove. So that's really it. The proofs are the same. The reasons are the same. It's just when you first get the picture, they're going to look more complicated and you're going to often see multiple triangles. So the first step is really to highlight what triangles you have um, or what triangles you're trying to prove are congruent and look for that reflexive property. So highlight the triangles, look for reflexive property, and then redraw the triangles and then do your proof as normal. Those are kind of your steps or your key ideas for solving these. So go ahead and fill in your key ideas and um, do the check your understanding problems.